her off and actually put me off, shut the door, got on, give the horse a bloody whack and left me. I had to walk from Colman to Ellis Lines. <laughs> yeah, I remember all the shops getting built along Hilliard Row and that. And um, at the end of Hilliard, at the end of Hilliard Road, I turned, you know where Orm yeah. Road is? Yeah. There was yeah. a nappy there. There was a nappy on that corner and the medical centre. Yeah. And as you look at the fire station there, you know that long building? Mm -hmm. That yeah. will be one of the oldest buildings on Catrick Camp. It is. Because, because I took a shortcut and a bloody old station bit me across there when I was about five year old. So that place, it was a, that would have been there, that would have been there just more than 80 years ago. Yeah. And when it was a nappy, my mother used to go, it was my sister, my brother and I, and we used to get cracked eggs and the cabbage and bloody leaves and stuff. And there used to be a lady called Miss Young, a great stout woman. and. My mother used to take her chocolates and we, she used to keep all the cracked eggs and apples and stuff. And <laughs> we used to go up with no money and come back with bagfuls. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, the old, I slept in caravans. I slept in the, well, you know, my great uncle, by, he was bloody strong. He lived till he was about 90. And he was like, he was about six foot four, you know, he did bare knuckle fighting. Yeah. And by he was bloody hard, and he slept slept in the caravan, you know, bow tops they're called, bow tops, and you just open your top door. By bloody talk about fresh air. <laughs> it's like me now. I've never had a cold see since 1940. Don't think. See me have my windows open and that. And we have only fire. We have no no eating only that. But anyway, here we go. You've been you you you've had a variety of jobs around the army and. On in, the, in the army, yes, like looking after prisoners in Wales. I was looking after in Wales. I was uh, get, pumping water. They gave me that job, and um, I say they gave me that job in Egypt, looking after the Germans. And they said to me one day, this major said, "Now then, bombardier, to allow you like that job?" I said, "It's all right." I said, "Why did why you offered it me and nobody else?" He said, "Well, don't you know?" I said, "Cause nobody else would know it." He said, "No, cause your name's German." And when your name comes up on the list, he, list, he said you're blending better with them. And so I've got all my <laughs> coat of, I've got all my coat of arms from Germany yeah. and everything. I've got all the story. Like, so I'm I'm the only one in the book now. Telephone you, book. You stopped. Um, you, you finished as you've already said. You finished your your education at quite an early age. Twelve. Twelve. What What did you do after? after that. You finished going to school. I finished going to school and I went to Roxby Surtees when I was 13 and I uh, wanted a job and he said, he said, is your father Jack Toll? And I said, yes. And he said, well, it's 10 shillings a week with a fortnight stamp off. A couple of days after a friend says to me, oh Ernie, there's a job at Brough Hall, Brough Gardens. I said, what's that? He said, it's 12 shillings a week. So I went down there and got that, but I had to get up in the mornings, get the papers, walk down through them woods where the bombs dropped, get the cans, walk to home farm, come back, take baskets of apples and stuff, catch the bus to Richmond, sweep the shop out, be a lad, come back, walk up through the woods, see if they wanted paraffin, that the people, paraffin or bread. And I did that for five days a week. I used to fell trees when I was fell trees when I was about 16 with cross cuts and that you know and because the war was on and you had to keep the fires going for the flowers and pushing wheelbarrows and that you know full of bloody wood and that and that's all the money you got. You mentioned the Germans dropped some bombs. Yes. Can you tell us where that was and, and roughly when it was what happened? Well I was going to Brooklyn 1942 mm -hmm. and um, you say you've got Walkerville Hotel there. Yeah. Stays there. Yeah. Well, on the railway lines, they went down into the wood, these big guns, and they used to move them about, and the artillery was with them. I think they're the yeah. ones that fired 21 mile. Could yeah. uh, nearly go across the channel. And they used to bring them about. So I think myself what happened was, when the planes were up over some, uh, some line somewhere there, Walkerville Hotel at night it stood out because it had like white marble pillars and I think it never shone up. So they let a stick of bombs go. So they went in the field, missed the train, went in the wood, missed the road and went straight across that corner because the train used to run, the train used to come across that road there. 
So do you think they were going for the railway line or just generally trying to create havoc or well, you going see, after the guns? Or? Well, you see, what Germany did, there was a time when they wanted people in Germany that had been to England that had photographs of Blackpool and Birmingham and all that. Yeah. And, you know, distances and one thing to another. So I don't know. But the, the circus came to Richmond just before. The circus came to Richmond and there were Germans, mostly Germans, and there were spies. Right. So they might have got something from them. It's a possibility that, it's a possibility that it did, you know, if you were, you were a few miles away, you could see that hotel, you know, the big pillars, it was all like marble. Well, the moon would have reflected the, the yes, light of the moon. Yes, so would have really, but, the marble but if, they, if they were going to hit it, they wasn't far off. There was only about maybe 100 yards, that's all it was. Because well, we had a few windows out, and my I lived in a place called Pipe Rill Farm behind the yeah. shops, you see, yeah. and we had a few windows out, and uh, but they were bomb. That's where they came there, and that's the only ones. That's the only w ones we had round Catrick. Those, I don't know if somebody dropped at Hudswell. I think there was some talk. Of, uh, you know Hudswell. Yeah, yeah. I think there was some talk of Hudswell, but I know there because you see, I took the shortcut to go to work, and I saw all these sheep and these uh, craters. Uh, funny how they missed the they missed the train, they missed that line, they missed the old road, they missed the other road, and they were just just in the straight line there, and the hotel was over there. There was here, so they weren't far off, were they? Well, there's talk that there was an unexploded bomb found underneath the Waterville Hotel when it was demolished. So the general assumption is that it had something to do with with that raid. Well, the hotel was up years before. Yeah, I, when I say it was, you know, beside the, the building in the car park or whatever, so... Yeah. There might have been another one, but I know there was about